know what it is? Kind of? MSP is literally just umami in us in a packet form. It's powder umami. Umami ah. powder. That's literally what it is. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, for the first SCP. Alright. SCP-582 is an adaptive, self-propagating meme in the form of an entity most often referred to as redacted. SCP-582's primary, primary ability is passive reality modification. Any fictional account written about SCP-582 will become a factual record of a manifestation of the entity in which SCP-582 will carry out all actions attributed to it in the narrative. Oh, thank you, Pika. These manifestations will happen at whatever time and place is specified if no specific location or time is given. The manifestation will occur at any opportunity that will meet the narrative's criteria. Details attributed to SB582 are permanent and cumulative. If a narrative con contains descriptions that contradict previous established details, they'll either have no effect at all upon SB582, or the effect will be lessened to a point where such events could logically occur. Through this effect, SB582 has a consistent, if generalized, portrayal due to its use in the works by multiple authors both before and after its discovery by the Foundation. SCP-582's actual abilities within narrative and generally nebulous and lacking detail. The most common format of story involves the aftermath of a, of a manifestation of SCP-582 or short-lived encounter with, with SCP-582 rather than an explanation or justification of the events. What is known is that SB582 regularly appears capable of appearing or disappearing at any place or time, and that no method of terminating or otherwise harming SB582 within any narrative has been successful. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still dangerous. It's I mean, still not something you can really contain. They uh, they did run a test with this and created Slenderman. Oh. <laughs> they were able to take care of it, but still, they created Slenderman. <laughs> you you know why they did that, right? Why they wrote that in? It's because no, it's because people people kept trying to push Slenderman and be an SCP, so they're like, oh. "Fuck it, let's kill him." <laughs> there, he's he's in the SCP universe. He's dead. Happy. <laughs> I don't. Can I be? Can I be friends with the SCP? <laughs> No, <laughs> and I don't care if I. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so it's basically a written narrative that can create anything. Yeah. And manifests as anything. It's A O three. It's A O three. But instead of like just making weird shit, sometimes it's like it can make it into a physical thing. Ah. Hmm. Now we just gotta think about it. Cause it didn't say it's killed anything. I don't think. Has it killed people's hopes and dreams? 
can it kill people? Scope two degree. Yes, but does it kill people? Oh, it's called right. Slender Man. In, in manifestation think... alpha, it whenever it does manifestation alpha, twenty three percent in fatalities of the instances. The manifestation of Zeta, 158 deaths. No, 358 deaths. Yeah. What I thought the leveler was right. <laughs> so, people have been killed by it. <laughs> oh, I think, I think it just depends on the manifestation. I mean, if it's like manifestation alpha, I mean, there's still deaths, but it's low. But if it's like zeta, the death occurrence is going to be high. I think it just really depends on the manifestation that we go by it, where to put it. Hopefully, it'll be allowed to murder any. Well, you didn't even put it in an area yet. <laughs> I think certain groups. No, 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 no. Yeah, I agree with that. Because, I mean, I think 358 deaths is a bit much for a certain group. Honestly, considering its potential and the fact that it literally will murder certain amounts of people. For whatever, for different lines or reasons, depending on what it's creating uh, and what what is inventory, it feels like it's an XK class. Fair. Be, yeah. Okay. So the last test that they used for it was to recreate Jonah and the whale. Oh. Stories. What do you do with a Peter? Make Jonah the whale. <laughs> what is Jonah the whale? It's a biblical, guess- a biblical story. Oh. Jonah said no to God. God's <laughs> like, okay, fuck you then, and put him in a whale. Why does God do that commonly? Didn't God send like two or more bears after a group of children because the children made fun of his prophet? For being bald. Yeah, I believe so. Why do people worship that feature again? Yes. These are not technically God, but stories people made of God that have been distorted a lot over time. Fair. Even our oldest records of the Bible are not the oldest records of the Bible. Didn't God used to have a wife? Yes, God had a wife at one time. God also has no gender, but people like to say they're a man. Because no gender, both man and woman, but have to be a man. Yep. Uh, I just got a curse down at the end. Miku, find your god! No. <laughs> anyway, the next SCP. Uh, SCP-589 is a stuffed animal that is able to change its appearance based on the subjective desires of the first person to come in contact with it. SCP-589 has the ability to create a calming, soothing sensation within anybody who sees or comes into physical contact with it. This ability appears to be mimetic, as it is able to spread yeah. via copies of itself as well as, as pictures depic- depicting its likeness. However, the effectiveness of these copies- Oh shit. 
I dropped my phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, however, the effectiveness of, this, of these copies is directly proportional to the quality of the product. The common effect of SP589 in parts is not unlike the use of narcotics, as it stimulates the areas of the brain that are responsible for feelings of relief and euphoria and encourages the production of chemicals and hormones that reduce stress. However, this effect quickly becomes addictive, with infected in individuals becoming completely dependent on SP589 after extended exposure. Once addicted, an individual's interaction with SP589 or any of its copies borders on complete obsession and they are compelled to create more copies of SP589 and attempt to spread them. However, what makes SCP-589 dangerous are its after effects. After a certain period of time, SP-589 will immediately vanish. SP-589, any of its physical copies and all versions of it in printed and electronic media will completely disappear. This sudden and massive disappearance of SP-589 results in catastrophic consequences for those infected by SP-589. Without SP-589 to keep them passive and calm, infected individuals will immediately suffer a, very, a variety of severe withdrawal sy symptoms, including but not limited to manic depression, psychosis, heightened aggression, uncontrollable despair, dementia, mania, paranoia, and various other behavioral disorders. It is not known how or why SP-589 does this, though there is speculation that SP-589 feeds off of the mental anguish it causes to those completely obsessed with it. Once the process is complete, SP-589 will reappear in another random location and repeat the cycle. SCP-589 was tracked down and contained after the Foundation received a string of mysterious reports of villages and towns in rural areas being found with their entire populations dead, apparently having slaughtered each other in a massive and violent riot. The Foundation be began tracking these incidents, but could not determine their cause until Dr. Redacted discovered a pattern in the targeted areas. Using a data Dr. Redacted provided, the Foundation managed to intercept and contain SB-589 through several personnel had to undergo rigorous psychological treatment to counter the effects of SB-589. Currently, SB-589 has not attempted to leave its containment area, which has led researchers to hypothesize that SB-589 follows a specific life cycle pattern. So bad. Just yeah. bad. Very bad. I don't think it's a certain groups kind of thing. I think it's worse. I it's either um city or country because it already took out multiple cities, but I wouldn't I'm not quite sure it would fall under country because the foundation has it under control. Yeah, like the moment's Also, it's it's containable, which makes it slightly less dangerous than some SVPs. Oh yeah, and apparently uh with an addendum people with uh high self esteem and no stress have only a twelve percent infection rate. Oh so high. All things considered. Probably a low rate of infection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Though yeah. people with low self esteem, ninety percent infection rate. Jesus so Christ. Three of us would be fucked, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless anyone here can say they have a high self esteem. No. Penguin? No. 
I, I don't think most I think most of humanity does not have high self esteem. <laughs> Especially nowadays. <laughs> Everything is just bad. But yeah, I, I'm thinking city because it hasn't like from what it looks like it hasn't targeted giant areas. It's like cities and towns. Or like like small cities and towns. I it's not well, large. It's yeah. It could destroy an entire country if it moves fast enough. What I'm thinking is don't control. let it on. If it could, like, transfer digitally, don't let it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but since we have it under control, everything is fine. Yeah. For now. Yeah. It's, it's the day fun. that thing goes on Twitter and is in able to infect people digitally is the day everything is fucked. Oh, if everyone on Twitter had low self-esteem, you know, at one point, Trump was on there. And he has all the self-esteem. More than he should. Also, Elon Musk is on Twitter. I forgot about that dickhead. Oh. This this one's gonna be fun. This is a Dr. Wondertainment item. Oh. I don't know who that is. Good we tell him. Oh. Uh, no. they're, I think they're actually in a proposal now. Like, Dr. Wondertainment. Oh. Yeah, they are. Dr. Wondertainment's proposal. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know they were previous to a proposal. That's amazing. Hold on. Let's see who did it. It is Jim Norse proposal. Why? Uh, when I hear the name Jim, I think of Jim Pickens. I don't know if anyone knows who the fuck that is. It seems to be it was last edited in July 30th, 2021. Oh. Which means that's okay. pretty much when it was fully released. So, not that long ago was he was added. Dr. Wonder Kingman is older than a year old. So no, I'm saying when they were put as proposal. Oh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. I guess it was one of those new things yeah. There's I don't a... blame them. I yeah. Wonder Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do we explain Wonder Twinman to the child without murder? Um, Think of Laffy, but as a toy maker. So, Santa Claus, if Santa Claus just had murderous intent? Kinda. He's not really that murderous. He just creates toys that can murder or are just really fucked up. I I feel like I feel like that should still count, to be honest. For murderous intent. <laughs> one example of just fucked up is there's one living SCP that's living and breathing. Doctor Wonder Tendon made them literally as a Halloween uh as a Halloween prop. That's just they they were they literally waited in someone's attic waiting for like years and years thinking, Why won't they take me out anymore? And that's in two found this and found them because they were wandering the streets looking for people. Just that See, yeah, not all of them were murderers. We're just depressing. I, I Another might... one is uh, Mr. Life and Death. Yeah. Where he dies and he's born within like, what is it, an hour? The whole process is horribly painful. Oh, yeah, and I forgot um, he created Mr. Mr. Fish. I don't want to know Mr. Fish. He's just a human with a fish head. <laughs> how does he breathe? <laughs> How does he breathe? <laughs> Can he breathe? Don't worry about it. But anyway, 
on to the next S- on the next SCP. That's a Doctor One Entertainment item. <laughs> SCP six o nine is a collective of identical green billiard balls in the American pool style, which measure fifty seven point fifty five millimeters in diameter, and are believed to exist only as immaterial manifestations of a concept. Instances of SCP-609, designated SCP-609-1, are unbound by physical laws. Each instance is impervious to damage, undetectable except by the naked eye, and unable to conduct heat. Instead, they always feel cold to the touch. SCP-609-1 can be manipulated by thought. When a sapient creature is in direct visual contact with SCP-609-1, it'll emulate the actions the user imagines, including motion, duplication, and and instantaneous manifestation at a visualized location. Observers cannot alter the physical appearance of SCP-609-1 or erase it from existence. According to the object's documentation, SP-609 is intended to be a literalistic embodiment of Plato's theory of form. Researchers have conjectured conjectured that SP-609 can be controlled through visualization because SP-609-1 and the concept of SP-609-1 are the same object, and that SCP-609-1 cannot be damaged or otherwise mutilated because SP-609 SCP-609-1 is a manifestation of an immutable metaphysical form. If multiple observer, observers attempt to activate SCP-609-1 simultaneously, an additional instance of SCP-609-1 will manifest for each observer. As a result of its thought-activated replication, SCP-609 has proliferated under Foundation custody while SCP-609-1 is relocated to or generated in an area outside of viewer's visual range, a recovery mission is required to resume full containment of SCP-609. Locations from which SCP-609-1 have been recovered include the Research Facility 5 Kitchen, the Research Facility 5 Second Floor Bathroom, the Apartment of Researcher Redacted on top of a television, a warehouse in Pasadena, where SCP Redacted had been recently located. A set of television series Redacted breach occurred during a taping. All footage of the event was confiscated and amnestics were administered to all witnesses. The frontal lobe of Assistant Researcher Redacted. The memory tissue of Researcher Redacted, Earth's Moon, currently unrecoverable. SCP-609 was recovered with a yellow box believed to be its packaging. The box is labeled Dr. Wondertainment's Ontological Six Ball in large text. Although the topography differs in comparison to other products recovered from the same manufacturer, smaller graphics below the title depict a marble bust of Plato with, with a speech button that says, It really exists and an unidentified grinning woman explaining, now subject to casualty. I, I mean, casualty. I don't know why I said casualty. Whatever. A green pool ball is visible inside through a cellophane window. The following text is printed on the back. Hey kids, have you ever wondered whether your experiences are fully authentic, or if only your thoughts are real and the world around you is a web of lies? Now, the question is immaterial. With your new ontological six ball, you can use your imagination to make the hottest new learning toy that cannot be. It floats zenith in air with your thought power. It flies. Did you think it could only float without moving? You should, you should be able, you should be Sartre with that. It can go anywhere. Think real hard of any place fun times can be had. Ontological Six Ball is probably there already. It possesses the highest and most fundamental kind of reality. All other objects which share 
and its form are imperfect reflections of its ultimate truth. Did you create it or did it create you? Don't put Descartes before the horse. If you don't think this is the grooviest toy out there, you must be joking. Caution. Some are similarly required. Doctor Entertainment assumes no liability for injuries, accidents, or existential nausea caused by physical or intellectual misuse of ontological six pack. Doctor Entertainment does not endorse socialism and any ominous implications that result from use of ontological six ball are not view- views shared by Doctor Entertainment. Ontological six ball are- is not beholden to space time. Ontological six ball cannot be forgotten or unlearned. No copyright date, retail sticker, or other identifying information is present on the packaging. The package was not intended to contain SP609-1. The object seen through the cellophane window is a paper display insert designed to simulate a barrier ball. Ball. Instead, the object designated SP609-A is enclosed. SP609-A is a Kaimito hazardous. 32 page booklet titled Dr. Wondertainment's Ontological Six Ball Assembly Guide. First page consists of a disclaimer. Caution Make sure to read all instructions and warnings before assembling or operating Ontological Six Ball. An adequate, modified, or otherwise improper assembly of Ontological Six Ball may result in undesired functions. If Ontological Six Ball begins to surround you up to the Exclusion of everything else making you feel confused, lonely, and like the only thing you can ever be sure sure of is the ontological six ball. Stop playing and take a break. By possessing ontological six ball or any included material, including knowledge of existence of ontological six ball, you agree to accept all liability for consequences, accidental or metaphysically inherent of S- of ontological six ball, and also consent that. Ontological six ball will always be a fundamental part of who you are. Have fun. The remaining pages contain comprehensive instructions of assembling SB 609-1 through careful directed thought. Printed a six point type with no illustrations. The booklet describes in exhaustive detail the appearance, construction, physical properties, and behavior. Cultural significance and symbolism and other aspects of a pool ball named in America CA. Oh, America, California. Oh. The 1970s as related by someone in a state of severe mental distress. Test subjects who read SV 609-A in its entirely entirety have demonstrated the ability to generate SV 609-1 through concentration. Although anesthetic therapy is ineffective in reversing this effect, it can erase knowledge of the ability from the subject's mind, generally eliminating its use unless the subject is somehow informed or reminded of the ability. And that's it. Certain groups. Oh, I agree. Certain groups. Yeah. Do you have to get your hands on it first? I wouldn't want to get my hands on it, but yeah. I'm just worrying how the fuck it made it to the moon. Mm. <laughs> Neil Armstrong. Or you could say someone visualized it. <laughs> I also find it funny how we can make spa- spaceships to attack uh, one dangerous spaceship, but we can't retrieve a ball from the moon. Because... <laughs> Ball on moon is pretty epic. <laughs> Why the fuck would you want to remove a ball from the moon? I think it's because worse than a needle in a haystack. After all, think of how hard it would be to figure out where on the moon it is. <laughs> that means no one can get it, though. <laughs> There's no way to sense it. There's no way to pick it up on the radar. You literally have to see it with your naked eye, and there's an entire moon. Okay, but no one can get the ball. Yeah, exactly. You can't get it if you can't find it. Yeah, that's a good thing. 
Because then no one can get their hands on the ball. That's valid. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't see the bad thing of people not being able to find it. Like, that, that should be a good thing, because then no one can get the ball. So you're trying to pay off on the entertainment to cause yeah. Laffy. Do Laffy and Wonder Pig get along? I don't think so, because Laffy doesn't like anyone who takes his show stage. Oh. I mean, he hates Bobble the Clown. What? Who's that? Oh, yeah, in the cartoons, Wonder Pig says everything randomly, where Laffy is very A. Yeah. So uh, we're about to talk about uh, a new S- uh, this is not a new SCP, but an SCP that's ta- uh, that is very well known. And I've made jokes about bringing it to a sleeping party. Like, uh-uh. a- <laughs> use this a pillow. Uh-oh. Oh, hi, Aderna. Uh-oh. Oh, no. You want to know what SCP it is? No. SCP-610. Of course. Right? No. <laughs> oh, is that an SCP-610 okay. is kind of live, or is that a different one? Okay, new, new, new rule. No, that's already a rule that I can't do that. It's already? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to try. Sure, I'm going to make sure it's a rule before we go, we go on, because you're... <laughs> Is Brave mm. even listen to the rules? No. Brave doesn't listen to the rules, but we're gonna fucking... So we make sure she, she doesn't... Even if she doesn't want to. Yep. Yep. We love you, Brave. We love you, too. <laughs> there you go. It's a rule. I'm playing. Okay. Why? Wait. <laughs> what back. type of fuck shit do you have to do to have so many rules created about you? Um. Don't worry a about of, it. A lot how many? Of how many war crimes has Bright committed? Four twenty sixty nine. No. <laughs> That's how many war crimes <laughs> I've committed. Um, it was made last year on the twentieth of the seventh month. Doctor Wright is not allowed to use SCP six ten for pillow fight. This okay. The thing is okay. The thing about that is someone has to do that thing for it to be made a rule. <laughs> what? What? what happened? Technically, I'm not. I'm not like, even allowed to go even near six ten. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, well, no. there we go. What? <laughs> because it only specified pillow fight. <laughs> Is it a pillow filled with bricks? Well, oh, no. since you don't know what this is, uh, Dragon, I'll read it to you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Description. What? Huh? Are you saying you don't know what 610 is? Yeah, they're about to find out. I thought 610 was the gayest man alive. I thought 610 was the gayest man alive. I apparently. No. no. Description. No, 610, 610, yeah. is, 610 is something very, very. Ugh. Worse? Worse. Anyway. It's, um, it's, it's, it's also called the flesh yeah. technique. Oh, yeah, no, I, I know about it. I know about it. Um, yeah. yeah. Description. Initial reports of SCV 610 came direct from the Russian government through. Undisclosable okay, right. channels. We don't, right, we don't even need to do anything. We're just going to have to put this in XX class. XK class? 
Wait, does Dragon know that it evolved? Okay, wow. Yeah, it turned into, uh, it was, it, it turned, was it the one that turned into an infection? Instead it, of, no, oh, it no, was, it was a virus and turned to a fungal infection. Yep, yeah, that one. And then Hatchet just lost his fucking mind over it. <laughs> because it got stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a theory going around that one of the Scarlet's kin created 610. That would make sense. Because in in the story, uh, not the story, like uh, how the war was going to go end, one of the Scarlet's kin is supposed to bring an army. Uh-oh. And seeing how 610 can apparently be stopped <laughs> and keeps evolving. <laughs> it would make sense. <laughs> so everyone in the SCP universe is pretty much fucked, is what I'm, I'm hearing. Yeah. I think the Church of the Broken God is correct in what it is. What? In that, oh, you don't remember what they said about it? No. They, according to the Church of the Broken God, their god broke itself into pieces, defeating the god of instinct and the, their mechanized god is the god of knowledge. The god of instinct wanted to bring all humanity to a lesser state of thought, where the broken god wanted all humans to be able to learn and become intelligent. Mm. So yeah, it was created by the god of instinct because he's like, fuck you you humans for forgetting your instincts and becoming smart and reading books. (laughs) I feel like it's just how like most gods are. I mean, maybe not most, but like, you know, like made so, like fictional ones. Certain members of the Church of the Broken God can destroy six ten, and let it evolve past their ability to destroy it. Yeah, the only way the Foundation can do minimal damage to it is by standing on fire. Even then, it's difficult. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They're like, you know what? We don't like you, but you can destroy this, and this is worse than you. Oh, I remember watching a video. Um, Speaking of 610, there's this SCP called a Jersey Devil. The first time it ever saw 610, because there was this lunatic who brought it over to increase the power of Jersey Devil. The oh. Jersey Devil was terrified of it. <laughs> it wouldn't go near them and, and like even though it's like extremely hostile the jersey devil it was cowardly in fear and let the foundation take care of it and let them go on their way to the next SCP. SCP-616 is a prototype Boeing Redacted designed by Redacted and constructed on 
think. Okay, let me think. Yeah, June 16th, 1966. To your specifications. It's on the freaking Brit British type calendar, you know, or, or the days before the month. I got confused for a moment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, literally every country besides the United States does it that way, right? I I know, but I I don't like that. I like it is the US before. the way that it is. I don't know. We're special. Anyway. So That's because a long time ago Americans were like, we don't want to be like the British. <laughs> Well, True. I feel like that's kind of fair. Yeah. Anyway, though so superficially similar to the Boeing seven three seven, which went into service shortly afterwards, SB six one six model has been various internal alterations, including data expunged. Despite various alterations, the most important feature of SB six one six is a center lift emergency door, which has been dubbed. SCP-616-1 SCP-616-1 is a standard emergency door, though partially covered in extensive markings associated with satanic cult adhering to redacted. SCP-616-1 can be opened without major incident when grounded, and leads to the outside of the aircraft as expected. However, this is discouraged as nearly all personnel opening or and or passing through the door have experienced uh, severe anxiety problems and a persistent feeling of being watched. Long-term observation or exposure to SB-616 is not recommended. Observation using any sort of electronic device is satisfactory. While SB-616 is grounded, though some visual anomalies have been reported, including data expunged, as such, it is advised that personnel known to have a high tolerance to disturbing imagery be assigned to observation duty and work no longer than three consecutive days. All personnel involved in repairs, observation, operation, or flight of SB-616 must submit to psychological evaluations after each period of exposure. SB-616-1 or Autom uh, autonomously open every 30 minute or 30 days and begin to close. This event can be considered the activation of SB616-1. The speed at which SB616-1 closes is highly dependent on SB616 altitude and velocity and data expunged. It should be timed so that SB616-1 opens in mid flight. At an altitude of approximately 10,972 meters and a speed of what uh, about 780 kilometers per hour. Failure to properly time this event is catastrophic since SB 616 1 goes in fully while grounded, could affect all life forms within an unknown radius, causing potential hundreds of data expunged, posing severe threats to population centers and requiring immediate use. A procedure 600 Shoki. Once SCP 616 1 spontaneously opens, cabin pressure will destabilize as expected and extreme turbulence is encountered. At various points during the flight, all percent personnel may feel as if SCP 616 is quickly falling, though it has been Ascertain that SB-616 remains in relative stable cruising conditions during all times, including during the times of the events. SB-616-1's opening may cause certain individuals present to suffer fatal heart attacks or data expunged. Corpses with an undamaged larynx present with SB-616 once SB-616-1 activates seemingly reanimate for the duration of the flight. The corpses remain largely immobile and as such pose no physical threat but are capable of speech. These speaking corpses could be terminated if possible as their speech poses potential psychological dangers as well as enable SB-616-1's closing via data expunge. 
The language spoken by these reanimated corpses remains unidentified. So basically, if you have a fear of airplanes, do not go near this SCP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that makes sense. I think it was only for certain groups. Yeah. <laughs> Not everyone is afraid of airplanes. Yeah. Well, among other problems. Yeah. They just have to make sure they always time it. Otherwise, things happen. I feel like things happening, though, is kind of like a normal thing. Probably not to have it normal. It is not normal. Okay. There we go. Alright. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Dude, how big the tearless guy. Hold on, I gotta shrink it a bit. Because he got too long. <laughs> You're fine, Jerry. Anyway, uh, next SCP SCP 631. Is a species of large predatory organism with a vaguely crustacean appearance. They possess crustaceans. Yeah. Yes. They possess a wing morpho morphology consistent with the other chiro chiroptera and a reptilian ta tail terminating terminating in a venomous stinger. This tail also contains the majority of the organism's reproductive systems. Mature instances of SP631 are roughly 135 centimeters in length and 42 kilograms in mass. SP631 appeared to be genderless. I feel like I really enjoyed this one. Who? I said, uh, I think he was genderless. Oh. We need to fully hatch it into here. I, I, I don't, I don't. Well, then message them, dragon. No. Because <laughs> if anything, then he wouldn't join. <laughs> well, I'm busy streaming, so I can't exactly DM people. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. They might, they might not be alive. But anyway. SCP-631 are rendered uh, imperceptible in the visual spectrum when exposed to sunlight. The mechanism for this remains unidentified, however, testing has revealed that this response is triggered by heightened levels of... I'm going to butcher the fuck out of this. Actually, I'm just going to say the non-scientific name for this. Vitamin D, uh, D3. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> and the oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Levels of vitamin D3 in organisms. Uh bloodstream. SCP six three one remain detectable by their heat signature because of this. It is known that they remain almost entirely airborne during daylight hours. SCP six thirty one does not sleep and remain and remain active at night. Furthermore, they demonstrate distress or panic in response to low light environments. This reaction worsens in intensity over time, and it appears can only be alleviated by immediate feeding or exposure to daylight. The organism will subsequently locate to the nearest isolated sleeping human and impale the victim's throat with its stinger. Jesus Christ! Following the injection, of its paralytic victim, uh, venom, SV631 will remain in this position for two to three minutes while the victim expires. Then it will quickly consume the victim's internal organs, replacing them with fertilized eggs produced via its tail. 10 to 15 minutes following the reproductive act, the original instance of SCP-631 will expire, its body putrefying rapidly. 
the eggs require approximately one hour to hatch, at which point the newborn SB631 will consume the remainder of the victim's body. After their post-birth feeding, the instances will retreat to secluded locations and begin their growth period, during which they, they are inactive. Immature SP631 develop at an extremely accelerated rate, reaching their adult size within roughly four hours. Due to these factors, the lifespan of SP631 can be as short as 24 hours. Observation of SP631's behavior have revealed that they do not eat during daylight and will only prey upon sleeping and isolated human beings. In the absence of substance, SP631 are capable of surviving on average for 30 days. And there we go. So, I think Dragon Act is like, very surprised to this SCP. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not the worst thing I've heard. So it's just you didn't expect it's a, it. To... You know more, like a, a face hugger, not a face hugger, a chest hugger, pretty much. But like, mm -mm. is it widespread? Because like, it just seems like kind of like a certain groups type thing. Like it doesn't seem like it's going to end the world, but like As far as we know, we don't we don't we don't think we have it in containment. Hmm. That's Yeah, that's it doesn't not good. say we have it in containment. We just we just know what it is. That's not good. Oh no. So I still I feel like it's kinda complicated, so maybe like I, I think certain groups still. But like uh oh. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Like, it doesn't. It seems like it only targets one person at a given time, and I, and it, I, and we don't exactly know how many eggs it has. Well, two. Okay. Yeah. I don't I don't think it could end the world or a country. Yeah, no. Well, well the thing is it like dies out within twenty four hours. Yeah. Like I mean it can survive for thirty days without food, but like during its feeding period it's twenty four hours and it eats uh, okay, dies. So, so it can survive for thirty days. Okay. Yeah. Then we hear that part. Yeah. So basically, um, if we just keep them feeding for thirty days, we can just kill them all off. It's like a mosquito. <laughs> like a, a really fucked up mosquito. Oh, uh, I kind of it sounds. Somewhat like a kind of parasite. Yeah. I mean, isn't that what mosquitoes are? Mm. That's what that's what babies are. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. What? So So are you calling yourself then? I am not a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well you're not eighteen. I yet. am not 
I am not a baby. You yeah. are a small child. No, I am very tall. Small children can be tall. How tall are you? Five ten. Ish. That's not actually that tall for a teenager playing them. What's that tall? Penguin, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I come from a family where my mom's grandmother or great grandmother, something like that, was a legal was legally a midget. And I'm not that far off from your height. Also, I am I am five nine, and I am about the medium medium height. I like to think of myself as tall. That's bad yeah. because you're a child, but that's okay. All right. The next SCP is probably by far <laughs> the longest SCP name I'm ever gonna read. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> SCP. Huh? Oh no, not the scientific name. I mean, like the number. But there is a scientific name. For, I, I, I'll get that in a moment. Actually, I should probably type it out right now before it comes to pass. So I don't have to s stop reading. But I think Jiri will like this because this is an, uh, not only is it a joke SCP, but also a snake one. Joy. I can feel it in the bottom of my leather heart. <laughs> why, why do you not sound happy? And it's in stream playing. Huh? Yeah, you're saying Jerry? Sorry. No. Are not very snaky. Most snake things when it comes to ideas, actually, like fantasy in general, sci fi, mythology, they rely less on what a snake is and more of either people's fears or beliefs on what a snake is. Snakes are just danger noodles. Actually, I'm going to see if this already has like a. Like, for instance, many people in like in stories, snakes are typically always said to be the isolated hunter. But there's lots of snakes that actually hunt as groups and live in groups. Oh my god. What? This is literally just an anaconda. <laughs> oh. This is literally just an anaconda. I just thought of the song. <laughs> so, I, I would just say an anaconda. Type. For yellow on anaconda, the scientific name is literally for a yellow anaconda. A, a yellow anaconda. Yeah. Okay. I'll say that instead of a scientific name. <laughs> anyway. The SCP. Can, oh, you're saying? I can say the scientific name for you. Okay. Because they might just be using it scientifically. Fair. It could, yeah. All right. Anyway, yeah. on to the SCP. SCP six four nine dash two five six eight dash J is an entity which superficially resembles a species. Oh, oh shit! Did I read too fast? Yeah. Was was that it? No. I was saying that, that I was saying I was saying that to during it I read too fast because I wasn't sure if they were yeah. still looking at the snake. I'm just trying to make sure I have the pronunciation right. Okay. All right. Let me see. One second. Yes. Yeah. 
the Latin expert is in that voice call. That always gets me confused. Why do we still use Latin if it's a dead language? What you said, the Latin expert? I'm not a Latin expert. <laughs> I'm going to say most people use Latin to form groups of words simply because one, it's a very old language, even if it's currently dead, and then we can agree on how you pronounce it. <laughs> and two, it's it's already become the root of many words. So there's no denying that we're gonna keep gonna use we're gonna keep using it. Yeah. Um yeah. For next he's going to use. Alright. <laughs> Despite this re resemblance, SCP 649 2568 J retains the personality and speech patterns of a human male. SCP 649 2568 J has shown a capacity to reshape any geological features it sees or has heard described. These reshaping events exclusively affect any features. The entity deems as too flat. This has in the past included plains, marshes, marshes, and the ocean floor. During reshaping events, these locations will experience several seconds of tremors, following by the growth of an extrusion generally at the geographic center of the area seen or described. These extrusions will rise above the surrounding land and have uniformly possessed steep sides with flat tops. No known force has been capable of stopping this growth, though the internal structure for these formations have displayed no anomalous properties beyond their creation. Furthermore, when interviewed, SP 6.9-2568-J displays a compulsion to disclose the truthful answer to any inquiry. This compulsion has led to the discovery of several escape attempts, including one involving anomalous contact with an outside organization. Due to the linking of its reshaping ability to descriptions of locations, the method of this anomalous contact must be determined to, be, to affect continued containment. While interviews with SCP 649 2568-J have proven effective in limiting its contact, care must be taken to avoid further restructuring events during those interviews. There's only one interview, and I want to say it makes no sense with this SCP. <laughs> like what was said before. <laughs> Wait, so... Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I want to read the why interview. Does it sound like, why yeah. does it sound like... You're saying? It sounds similar, like they might be using similar things to the... What is it? Shit. I'm trying to remember the name. Yeah. Well, when you're trying to remember, I'm going to read the part I'll where... Just, I'll just oh. say the world serpent. Oh! I... F I know, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. I just do not know how to yeah. pronounce it. <laughs> uh, like I feel like they might have taken like some like they might have taken some inspiration from from it. Yeah, so. yeah, but um, we're about to see why it's a joke, SCP. The following interview took place very shortly after containment. Dr. Samarian, hello, in your own words, describe yourself. SCP 649 2568J. Well, I like big booties and, and I cannot lie. Following, oh, this, and, following this admission, the, the interview was. Oh, sus hold on. Following this in admission, the interview was suspended until further questions could be approved by the project director. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why it's a joke, SCP. <laughs> what the fuck? 
<laughs> I like how the description is so serious, and then he just goes to the interview like, yeah, no, this is a joke. <laughs> Like the, the description, like sounds like <laughs> makes it sound like a fucking like a mythological creature. Yeah, but it's not. It's not big. Hold on. From the picture they give all with the the SCP document, it lo- it looks like a pet anaconda, like not even fully grown. Hmm. Like but a can, juvenile. Like, fucking- it can shape mountains? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Wait. Oh, I just figured out. How can I, like, write? How can it, my brain just be like, yeah, that makes sense. So, like, I was just thinking, like, if she took this thing as being a, like, representation of the world serpent of, like, uh, We're just using a Python. I know. Spaghetti noodle. The spaghetti noodle. 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 Spaghetti to die, considering ocean water has more than the required daily amount of salt in one drop. It's like it's one to die is more poisonous. It's called the so, Okay, so so you're saying penguin wants to die again. <laughs> anyway, so where do we want to put this joke, SCP? Uh, I don't think that seriously. Based on it didn't say anything about like it, the the effects of the thing of what it does. So I and plus honestly, like it's we're food. honestly it's food. Yeah, and plus it's we're food. able to uh, in our interviews keep it from doing what it wants to do. <laughs> Snakes, describe yourself. I like big butts, and I cannot lie. <laughs> That, that snake speaks for truth. <laughs> also, not that MVP. Just food, dear. Yeah, also, like, I don't think the thing could, like, like, based on what it was saying, it didn't really seem like the changes, like, actually hurt anyone, so...